reporting and the finance minister is with me now. Sammy Wilson, the Secretary of State says this is a tremendous budget for Northern Ireland and he's told the politicians basically to stop whinging about it. Do you see his point? Well, I don't think, first of all, he could describe anything that has been said as whinging, but I think what we have done is try to make an honest that assessment. That was my word, not his uh, word. Uh, he uh, said the responses uh, have been pathetic. Well, well we, have, we have tried to make an honest assessment mm. of it. In fact, yesterday in the House of Commons, I accepted that the uh, finance bill, including the devolution of air passenger duty, the help for the film industry, the reduction in corporation tax, Belfast being regarded as one of the broadband cities, are all very welcome interventions and will help to improve the economy here. Um, however, I believe that the Chancellor made a number of wrong choices yesterday. I mean, why he needs to give a, a tax uh, break of £3,000 million pounds to the top 2%. It doesn't earners. affect people in Northern in the, Ireland, of course, it, directly, because there are so few. No, mm. but what it does do, it uses up resources that I believe he could have used in a different way, in a much more effective way, um, including bringing some of the very low income people out of the tax altogether. He could have raised it to £10,000. Uh, pounds. That's not a huge amount of money for people to be earning. And it um, will probably get tax. there eventually, because that's the Lib yes, Dems but, desire. But at a time when uh, th that end of the income spectrum is really being squeezed, that would be a much better way, of, to me, of spending £3,000 million Mm -hmm. and then giving it to, t to right. people but, but, who but are earning over 100,000 people in Northern 000. Ireland will benefit from that uh, increase in the and, tax and, allowance. And, and I'm not saying that mm. that's not a bad mm. thing. All I'm saying is that given the choices that the Chancellor had to make, I think it's a very bizarre choice for mm. him to say that for people who are earning over 150,000, two percent of the population, they should get a tax break of £3,000 million. While well, of course he while says he'll claim it back in well, other ways. Well, he so, hopes you know, he <laughs> will. Yeah. He hopes he will. He hopes, for example, the tax exiles will come from all around the world and flood the shores of Britain mm. and beat down the doors of the HMRC and say, please take our tax office. Now, if he has got that wrong, yeah. then of course it's a very costly um, right. well, intervention. Well, time will tell, but I, I, I'm, keen, I'm keen to limit our discussion to, to how it affects Northern Ireland, of course, well, and, and the people who, who and, watched and, the and budget and yesterday. And, and said, I think that in, in some ways it affects Northern Ireland mm. in, uh, in, in a positive way. Mm. There are things which I believe, if he was going to, to give money uh, and to, to relax uh, some spending, then I would have rather seen that he would have directed that towards, for example, fuel duty that he wouldn't have intervened in the way he has with pensions, that he would have looked at how he could have spent some more money on infrastructure and capital investment, which of course would have given us the potential for longer term growth and enabled us to uh, at attract further investment into Northern Ireland. Those are the kinds of things which I think would have perhaps um, per uh, uh, contributed to economic growth rather than giving a huge amount of money to people who by and large will probably save it anyway because they're already well off. And you've talked about the pernicious attempt to uh, introduce a, a public pay differential. Surely it's going to happen and you're not going to be able to much, do much about it, are you? Well, I mean, no, there, first of all, there's misconception here and I've heard the Secretary of State on uh, yesterday saying that uh, if we had lower um, public sector pay here we could attract jobs from London and everything else. We already have a pay differential between London and the public sector in Northern Ireland of 22%. So there's already a difference there anyway. Uh, well, I have intervened. That's because there's a London I, waiting, I, of course. I, no, well, mm. I, I've mm. also intervened mm. personally, of course, as the finance minister. We're the only part of the United Kingdom where uh, we have stopped bonuses, which are non-contractual, to public sector uh, uh, employees, because that was one of the ways I believe we could free mm. up money for doing other things. But the big thing things. is the difference between the private like and that. the public in Northern Ireland. Let's leave London out of it for a second. There's a big difference, depending how you calculate it, between 24 and 27 percent well, difference between yes. private and public pay. That's right, No, but had I been sitting here four years ago, I'd have been telling you a totally different story, because of course at that stage the difference between the private sector and the public sector in the middle of the boom was that the public sector found it very difficult to recruit some, uh, some people. When I was environment minister, for example, we were losing planning officers hand over fist to the private sector. They, at that stage, the health service were having to pay a premium to people who worked as, in technical grades right. okay. to, in order but, but to hold that them. was then, so, now is now. Yes, now if you no, work... but all I'm saying, Noel, yeah. is that this is swings and roundabouts. And 
to say that there's a problem. There is not a permanent problem but, here. But if you and want to stimulate jobs in the private sector, you have to make it less attractive to go into the public sector. Well, you see, again, you're making an assumption there that somehow or other the private sector is finding it impossible to recruit people because of wages in the public sector. That's not true. Mm. In fact, the public sector isn't even competing with the private sector at the moment because we're not recruiting anyone. Mm. And the, uh, the, the uh, private sector is not saying that it cannot get work. There are 67,000 people unemployed in Northern Ireland at present. Uh, the public sector is not recruiting. So how anyone could say that the, 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 the difference that there, that there is in wages at the moment mm. is impinging upon the ability of the private sector to grow. Because in no theory and logic that's the way well, it would work. Well, in theory that might be the case. In practice it is not the case. And I suspect that this policy which the government at Westminster is uh, driving is more about how do they cut public sector spending and how, and this is imp the important thing, how do they take money from regions and it's not just Northern Ireland, this includes most of England as well, outside London and the southeast of England. How do they take money from regions who are already struggling to keep up with the average UK growth? And if they take that money out, mm. then they'll deflate, the, the, they'll deflate places like Northern Ireland even further, causing more unemployment and indeed All making right. it difficult for the private okay. sector to grow which, as well. Which brings us to the point made in our film that there has been a possibility for Northern Ireland to negotiate technicalities, which would have a large Northern Ireland to keep some of the savings that would have come from reducing public pay, which would have been a good thing. And the accusation stands that the executive did nothing about that. Well, that's not true. And of course, the, the, the executive were handled uh, and offered, I think in the past, a public chalice or a, a poison chalice, namely, yes, re you negotiate your own wa the wages of your own public sector employees down and you can keep the money. I can nice you, offer. You can be absolutely sure that once the wages have been negotiated downwards, the Treasury would have said, and the cost of running the public sector in Northern Ireland is that much lower, therefore the block grant but will be But that's all adjusted. about the negotiation, that, isn't the, it, and what you're allowed no, and what you're no, not allowed, surely. We, we know, we already know the, the direction that the Treasury goes in this. I mean, when it comes to corporation tax, you want to have your own rate of corporation tax, fine, you pay for it. You want to have your own level of uh, public sector wages, fine, but you'll pay for it. And, you know, I think that uh, we were quite right in turning uh, the offer down at that stage. But what I have said is that where we have had the ability to do things like that, I've already done that as Finance Minister. We have made differences in public sector pay in Northern Ireland, and bonuses are one example that I mentioned to you that, that have been stopped so that that money can be directed into other, public ser uh, other parts of the public service. So we have shown that flexibility anyway. No. Another point made in our film, water charges. When are you finally going to say, OK, we're going to have to do this? Well, no, I mean, my attitude all along has been that in the middle of a recession, when people are already struggling to pay their bills, I will not dip further into their pockets if I believe there are ways in which money can be saved. And, you know, I could have put up, we could have put up water charges in the budget. And that money would have gone into the public sector. Yeah. Instead, and maybe save 500 nursing no, jobs oh, are no. going to go. Well, you see, what, what I did say, and I said to ministers, you will find that we will we'll be producing your budgets. We want you to make savings in the administration of your departments. And rather than inject that money from people's pockets in the form of water charges into the public service, what has happened in the last year? Administrative costs in the civil service in Northern Ireland have fallen by 3.8%. That's bigger than any other part, as far as I'm aware, of the United Kingdom. It's faster than we anticipated we could bring them down. We have brought the consultancy bill down by 38% in the past year. Now, that to me is the first priority of a finance minister. Make the best use of the money that you have at the moment. Then, once you've made that best use and achieved those efficiencies, if there are hard things to be, or hard decisions to be made about getting extra revenue, only then can you have some justification in going to people and saying, and by the way, if you want better services, you're going to have to pay more for them. Minister, thank you.